Now, uh, after the repeal of net neutrality rules, uh, there has been a lot of pushback from progressive groups. Wonderful. Uh, there's actually been a flurry of lawsuits from different states uh, in order to try to reverse Ajit Pai's uh, decision. Now, ISPs, of course, are fighting back against that because they are very, very aware of the shaky legal ground that this decision actually rests on. Uh, TechCrunch explains, I'm sorry, Tech Dirt explains, some of these lawsuits from competitors uh, and consumer groups highlight the blatant fraud and bizarre missteps that occurred during the net neutrality proceeding. That, of course, uh, is um, the comment period, for example, was filled with fake names, trolls. I believe somebody even um, faked Jeff Merkley's name in an anti-net neutrality comment. In fact, the majority of fake comments happen to be against people who are, uh, or people who are against net neutrality rules. And a lot of people are wondering, and myself included, if that was actually the work of the telecom companies who would massive, uh, massively profit from the repeal of net neutrality regulations. So, now, uh, these lawsuits also argue that the FCC violates the Administrative Procedure Act by passing a law without proving that the broadband market had changed enough in two years to warrant such a severe unpopular reversal. Now, of course, it's not. Because basically, this entire uh, net neutrality, uh, like these regulations, all they were doing was to keep the internet as it traditionally has been, free and open and fair. Because the ISPs had a history of making sure that it was not free and fair. And that's why we need net neutrality regulations in the first place. So now these ISPs, they're like, okay, we, we, we do have a win, but... We have more to go because we're being challenged on this. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to push back and make sure to codify this into law using Congress. Now, they claim, of course, to want to protect the Internet. But what they're pushing for is to prevent any future FCC or congressional lawmakers from passing actual net neutrality laws, which they could do, for example, if a progressive gets into office. You know, if we suddenly in 2020 have... President Bernie Sanders, he could appoint someone to the commission who will reinstate those net neutrality rules. Now, the ISPs desperately do not want that to happen because by then they'll have their uh, paid prioritization lanes going and they'd have to go back and, and, and end up losing lots and lots of money, billions of dollars. They don't want that to happen. So what do they do? They send out Marsha Blackburn, who Tector describes as, quote, a glorified rubber stamp for AT&T and Comcast. That's a pretty well, uh, pr pretty good explanation there or description. Um, now, they wrote that Blackburn has been going so far as to support state-level laws that hamstring competition and erode local rights. So, what's the major problem here with ISPs in America? No competition. That's why we have incredibly high prices and incredibly slow internet as compared to the rest of the world. Now, Blackburn, uh, and, and of course, she was in favor of that. A lot of these Republicans are in favor of making sure that there is no competition, especially from municipal broadband. That's why there's a lot of states out there that have actually banned cities and states from doing so. Now, Blackburn, shilling for the industry, recently unveiled something called, and you'll love the Orwellian name on this one, the Open Internet Preservation Act. Oh, we want to preserve the open internet. Wait, I thought that's what repealing the FCC uh, net neutrality regulations was supposed to do. That's your entire point. Well, we have to get rid of the regulations to preserve the open internet. And now apparently you also have to pass something through Congress in order to codify that? No, that's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're making sure that they take the absence of net neutrality regulations and to codify that to make it impossible to go back to the way that it actually was when the internet was free and fair and open. Now, she said, oh, oh, by the way, um, in this bill, ban, it does ban outright throttling, but it also ignores other avenues of abuse by ISPs, including things like zero rating and paid prioritization, that's fast lanes, okay? Now, Representative Black. Uh, Blackburn told Breitbart News, 
why she decided to unveil her legislation to codify the laws of what she says of a free and open internet. Quote, when you talk to innovators in the online space, one of the things that is frustrating to them is that the rules of the internet continue to change over the last few years. What we want to do is codify the rules of the open internet. What we saw with the Wheeler order in 2015 was really control of the internet. We are going to put rules in place that will stop the ping-ponging depending on who is in charge of the FCC. This is an issue that should be decided by Congress. No, it should not. Again, Wheeler's rules, all they did was basically enshrine net neutrality, right? The, the, the promise of net neutrality that's been with the internet the entire time since its creation into law in order to preserve them. It basically says we're going to have a light regulatory touch on the internet, but also we're going to make sure that all content is treated equally. So that's the, the, the Wheeler decision. Now, these companies, again, they don't like it because those rules prevented them from screwing over the consumers. Now, there's a laundry list of companies uh, who have actually tried to, um, and have gotten busted, tried to violate the spirit of net neutrality. So, and, and these go back uh, all the way even before 2015. In fact, some of these uh, things that the companies tried to do, throttling, blocking, uh, making sure that you can't use certain apps uh, because the company that is the ISP has a competing app. Well, these rules, of course, uh, net neutrality rules, were put into place to prevent that, to stop that from happening because it was already happening. That's why we had to put them into place in the first place. But Blackburn's bill, look, what it, it, it makes sure to keep these laws in place, or I should say an absence of laws into place, meaning that in the future we can't do anything about net neutrality so the companies can continue to screw us. Blackburn's bill is a Trojan horse. And there are other ways to actually preserve actual net neutrality. And it's not this. For example, Congress could use the Congressional Review Act to simply reverse Pi's decision and make sure that People uh, in, in the FCC, if another Republican gets into office, cannot reverse net neutrality rules. Or uh, something else that they could do is that the courts could reverse the decision. Failing that, the voters could just get pissed off and just replace everybody in Congress uh, with politicians that actually do care about net neutrality and are not paid off by the telecom industry. People that, well, actually follow the will of the people. Again, 83% of Americans are in favor of net neutrality. What we do not need to do is to pass new legislation that actually will undercut those rules. And that's exactly what Comcast shill Marsha Blackburn is trying to do. Do not fall for it. It's a trap. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.